Hello and welcome. My name is Jeffrey Kennedy and welcome back to another episode of Elliott Wave Junctures. Now today what we're going to be looking at or what I'm, where I'm, what I'm going to be talking about is the Kennedy channeling technique. But before I do, I would actually like to show you a price chart which kind of is a carryover from yesterday's lesson. If you recall in yesterday's lesson, what we spoke about was the significance of a seven wave price move. As you know, we typically with respect to counter trend moves or corrective wave patterns, specifically zigzags and flats, they consist of three waves identified as waves A, B, and C. Whenever you have a corrective combination, say a double zigzag or a double flat, then the move actually consists of seven waves and can be labeled as A, B, C, X, A, B, C, or sometimes W, X, Y. Well, the reason I'm bringing that issue back up today, again, is I was noticing I was going through some price charts and I found another seven wave price move here in Facebook. And I know that's kind of a popular issue and I've seen a lot of press on it. So I'd just like to point out that the, the advance we've seen in this market the last few days has been a seven wave price move. It's slow, it's choppy, it is contained within parallel lines. And as you know, if I was mentioned yesterday, a break of the extreme of the wave six here ideally will signal the completion of the price move and thereby set the stage for further decline back below the origin of the pattern. Just kind of an FYI on that. But today's lesson with respect to Elliott Wave Junctures is going to be on something I call the Kennedy Channeling Technique. And the reason or the origin of the Kennedy channeling technique basically came from one question a long time ago that I had and it was a problem that I think many aliaticians face early on in their career. And that is if you have a five wave advance followed by a three wave decline followed by another five wave advance, what is indeed the accurate labeling or what is the correct labeling for that? On one hand, you could go uh, one, two, one or you could identify it as ABC. Now, how you actually ultimately answer that question is, is of paramount importance because if it's a 121 or a 1212, you're actually buying the market because you're anticipating a wave three or three price move. Where on the other hand, if it's an ABC structure, then that, that would be totally different interpretation and you'd be approaching that much differently from a trading perspective. So what I've done or what I actually did, and this has been over a decade now, I developed a very simple trend line technique that actually increases the confidence confidence in my wave counting ability. And it's based on a very simple premise and that is number one, corrective wave pattern or counter trend price action tends to be contained by parallel lines. Okay? Very simple. Which means by default that if price action is not contained by parallel lines, odds are that it's actually an impulse wave. Now over here to the left, I've actually got an impulse wave drawn out. And what I'd like to do just momentarily is remove the price channels. And I'll show you actually how I construct the, uh, uh, the channels with respect to an impulse wave. First and foremost, we start off with what I call a base channel. And that's simply from the origin of wave one to the extreme of wave two, take a parallel of that line off the extreme of wave one here. So this would be waves one, two, this is my initial trend line, and then I have my parallel. Okay, now let's pretend that say everything on the right hand side of that trend line that I just put up, everything to the right of this point has yet to form. That being the case, everything in this market is essentially ABC. Now when prices begin moving above the upper boundary line of the base channel, that this point and at this point only do you have any type of evidence, chart evidence or price confirmation that you are indeed working a third wave price move. At that point, you can confidently identify this advance as a wave three, and then subsequent price action would be a wave four. Well, how long does wave three last? Very simple. What you would simply do is do another channel here, and I call this the acceleration channel, because what I've noticed over the years is that whenever prices break out of the acceleration channel, that means that wave four is complete. Then you simply do another base, another corrective price channel right here, that defines the parameters of wave four. Also, two, the base channel trend lines tend to provide support for wave four. And whenever you begin breaking above the upper boundary line of the corrective price channel or the deceleration channel, as I sometimes call it, that signals that wave four is complete and that wave five is in force. Now, over here to the right, very simply, this would be simply waves A, B, and C. 
Again, counter trend price action tends to be contained by parallel lines. So I, I'm, I'll see if I can actually uh, find a video or something, a little bit more work on the Kennedy channeling technique that I can offer the um, Elliott Wave Juncture subscribers. But it's a very simple technique, and I talk about it quite often, in fact, just about every day with respect to my futures junctures work. Because again, it is a very much of a cornerstone in my approach to the markets because it does increase the, the, the accuracy of my Elliott Wave interpretation. Now, again, this is just a diagram, so let's actually apply the Kennedy channeling technique real world, real time. Okay, here we have a price chart of Oracle, and very simple, uh, what I'm going to do is start at the origin of the price move, which is right here, and then take a line over to the right, and essentially around this extreme right here. Now, you can move it a bit higher here, possibly that low, this low, or this low, and I would probably go ahead and let's go ahead and put it right here, and then I take a parallel of that line off the extreme of the price move. Well, very simply, I can see right now that this is a counter trend price move in Oracle. This is most likely an ABC, and the reason why is because look where prices moved up to and then reversed from, essentially the upper boundary line of the corrective price channel. Okay, again, as I've said before, counter trend price action tends to be contained by parallel lines. Well, if this move right here is wave A, if the initial move up is wave A, then wave B, again, should be contained by parallel lines. Well, let's see if it is. Well, as you can see, it most certainly is this wave B. So the way I would actually label this price move is simply wave A, wave B, and then wave C. Okay, well, uh, the subsequent move to the downside, how can we label that? Can we go with a 1, 2, 1, 2 count? Possibly. Do we have confirmation of a 1, 2, 1, 2 count? Well, no, we don't. We actually have to begin drawing our base channel lines, which would be right here. And to confirm the presence of an impulsive decline, we have to first fall below the lower boundary line of the base channel. We need to see something like that. And better yet, we need to see further decline below this line right here, the lower boundary line of the corrective price channel to the upside, which would be this blue line right here to confirm this move is indeed complete and that a, a complete retracement is underway. Okay, now how can we draw the corrective price channel if a flat correction is in force? Now, I believe this is a flat correction here in Google. And essentially what I'm looking at would be, say, from this extreme here, you have waves A, B, and C, and then to the downside, another, say, a wave A, probably a triangle B, C to this low, and then waves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, whenever you have a flat or an expanded flat correction, the way you draw that corrective price channel is off the extreme of wave 2 or 4. Now, with typically whenever I'm working with a flat correction, I'll draw my parallel point to the extreme of wave 2. If I'm dealing with an expanded flat, as I am in this instance right here, then here's my origin point. My pivot point would be the extreme of wave 4 of C, and that would be right here, and then take a parallel of that line off the extreme of wave A. N again, notice the significance of the trend lines and the reversal point with respect to where the pattern actually ended. Also, too, notice here how we took out the lower boundary line of the corrective price channel, did so decisively, came back up and tested the underside of it, and have been falling nicely ever since. This is how you draw the corrective price channel when faced with a flat correction. Now let's look at, again, with respect to the impulse wave. Very simple. You start off with a base channel right here. This is the euro. There's my base channel. So what we actually have at this point, whenever prices slice through that lower point right here, there's your confirmation that you're working a third wave decline. Until that happens, the best way to approach the market would have been this is simply A, B, C. When this happens, you actually have evidence and confirmation of a third wave price move. Then you draw your acceleration channel, which defines the parameters of wave three, also two, Penetrating that trend line right here tells me wave three did indeed end at this point. And then from there, we draw another corrective price channel, which defines the parameters of wave four, as you can see right here. Also, two, notice this trend line, which acts as resistance for the fourth wave price move, thereby clearing the way for further decline. All we need to see now is closing price action below the lower boundary line 
of the price channel right here, say below 124.75, and that will signal that wave 4 is complete and that wave 5 is underway. Very simple, very simple technique that really does increase the, uh, your accuracy with respect to your interpretation uh, or application of the wave principle. And again, it's very simple. I've been utilizing this technique for over a decade since I developed it, and it has proved me quite well. And I just wanted to share that with you. And again, within the next day or two, I'll see if I can't find a video in one of my toolboxes that actually uh, spends a bit more time, maybe 20 or 30 or even 40 minutes, going through a number of examples and the application of the approach. Again, this is the Kennedy channeling technique, and it greatly enhances your ability to identify wave patterns real time, just as we've done here, much more, much more accurately. Thank you. For